Welcome back to 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. This fall, my videographer and I hit the road to attend the Ontario University's Fair in Toronto. Whenever my schedule allows it, I just can't resist joining 21 universities, thousands of ambassadors, and 130,000 prospective students and parents. It's North America's largest higher ed consumer show. This year, instead of reporting on new exhibits, VR goggles, or view books, we focused on in-depth interviews with more than a dozen university presidents or their designates, usually senior administrators. Our conversations focused on the subject of innovation. Not just research commercialization, but the entire spectrum of higher ed innovation, from student services, to classroom pedagogy, to campus design. If you missed our summary of the innovation spectrum, Take a moment to check it out. Last week we began a three-part series to answer the question, how can senior leaders nurture a culture of innovation on campus? This week, part two of how to spark innovation. Let's take 10 and take notes. 10 with Ken is an almost weekly look at higher ed news, trends, innovations, and bright ideas in and out of the classroom. Brought to you by Eduvation. Colleges and universities face considerable pressures for change from demographics, evolving students, and competition. I summed up the nine forces for change in higher ed in a previous episode. Despite their reputation for liberal open-mindedness and scientific innovation, universities are also hugely conservative institutions. Academic culture has a thousand-year tradition, and ceremonies and regalia are proudly archaic. So campus leaders face the challenge how to shape institutional structures, processes, and culture to enable innovative thinking. Last week, we started to address the question with the help of a dozen university leaders in Ontario. We heard about the conservative forces on campus that can resist change. We are agents of change for other people, not necessarily for ourselves. <laughs> but also the critical importance of innovation. We must believe in innovation, without which we will become insignificant. We started to explore 10 ways to spark innovation, starting with fostering meaningful dialogue. To have deep dialogues about our academic plans, about our research plans, about our visions and missions for the universities. And listening to campus stakeholders. To consult, consult, consult. There were plenty of other interesting comments and observations, so check out part one if you haven't. We left off our conversation by observing that administrative leaders should seek out diverse voices across campus, but they should also seek out diverse perspectives from around the world. The second is very much to be militant proponents of diversity, uh, to ensure that diverse voices and ways of understanding the world are part of your curriculum planning and uh, part of the student experience. Our own domestic students have not been nearly as likely to take up opportunities to have international experiences. And the more we can do that, it not only broadens their total experience, but it allows them to come back to Canada with uh, interesting ideas and, and alternative ways of thinking about things, all of which, of course, is fundamental to enhancing the culture of innovation in our society. And part of that is also helping our staff and faculty also have those kinds of opportunities and experiences, because then they come back with other ideas about, about the way uh, we might do things better or differently and, and uh, get us out of our kind of collective group think. It's also crucial to ensure openness, transparency, and trust on campus. Certainly open and transparency in what's going on in a university is key to sort of starting that process. You know, insecurity does not breed courage. You can't be creative if you're terrified of making a mistake. When people feel comfortable, they're willing to try things. The way you do that, I think simply put, is collegiality. When people don't trust one another, they tend to be very conservative about all kinds of things. You retreat into yourself. To foster innovation on a university campus, two groups in particular need a strong working relationship. We have structures in universities that blend the, uh, the authority of, uh, of, our, of our Senate and of our faculty colleagues with the authority of our boards and our administrations. You know, the traditional university model of the bicameral system of 
Senate and, uh, and board governance it has in many ways served in institutions very well. The more collegial those two aspects can be and to talk to each other on a regular basis and uh, share with each other their plans for the future. Facilitating uh, relationships between those two units so that everybody's more trusting of one another. It's often easier to spark innovative approaches at the periphery, in pilot projects or experimental institutes. One way to help reinforce an innovation mindset across campus is to spread the word about the efforts of peers and colleagues. I, mean, I think there's three things really that leaders can do around this issue. And, and the first one is showcase. So, you know, when, when people have good ideas, when, when they're trying new things, for the right reasons, then I think leaders can talk about it. Rewarding uh, and acknowledging our, our best researchers and our best teachers. I see them all over. Right across the university, there are these pockets of people, they, re you know, they really want their students to learn something and they got the cool idea for how to make it work. And the Teaching Learning Center is very active. They offer a lot of workshops and, as I say, best practices. And they are a lot of support for faculty when they want to look at new ways of doing things. Teachers get together and talk about, especially the younger teachers, are about how uh, they're adopting different types of technologies and softwares. We're opening up a teaching and learning uh, commons, a spot on campus. In our case, it's in the library, where our students and professors can come together and learn how to learn and learn how to teach. We've established a center for teaching and learning, and we put a very dynamic uh, dean, educator in front of it and part of her job is whether it's workshops or working with individual faculty to help people innovate and find new ways of doing things. And uh, A, that encourages them. B, it says to other people if you do cool stuff for the right reasons you'll get some attention. And hoping that that spreads, hoping that it's contagious. You might even showcase the failures. You can also showcase people for trying something that they tried for the right reason, didn't work that time, and speak positively about their attempt to get it done. Senior leadership can't push an innovation agenda, but they can help prevent the institution from pushing against it. I think the first thing that you can do as a senior leader is at least not block or hinder a culture of innovation. I think every aspect of the university, whether it's the board, the administration or the faculty, can make changes in policy. New things often uh, create concern and fear for people. There's resistance to change in certain areas. At this level of administration, you're not very directly involved in things. You have to try to cre create the environment, create the, the backdrop, and then get out of the way look for people who are innovative and support them and put them in positions of authority. So as leaders we can actually uh, be out there like a football blocker. You can run interference, creating a space for that innovation to happen by preventing it from being shut down inside the institution by resistance. You need to build a culture of saying yes uh, and especially saying yes to the people who have the ideas and the energy to change the place. And they're often the difficult people. They're bubbling over with energy and it's too easy to sideline them. It's too easy for people to say these people are too difficult to deal with or I don't trust this person. Or... Don't say that will be complicated, that will be costly. Uh, we've never done it that way before. Rather than shutting us down and saying you can't do this anymore, I'm getting too much mail, what they said was I'll handle the mail, carry on. It's important to be able to identify those people and then help the institution live with those people. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Campus leaders need to proactively disarm the forces of resistance and negotiate some kind of truce with the innovators in their midst. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. In the last episode and this one, we've explored six ways to nurture a culture of innovation on campus. We've heard how important it is to foster meaningful dialogue and collaboration including diverse voices, students, and global perspectives. We've heard about the importance of transparency and trust to give people the confidence to explore new ideas and new ways of doing things, some ways to share best practices around campus, and some thoughtful reflection on a key task of senior leadership to remove obstacles and soften opposition to innovators and their radical ideas. But there are some key themes and key responsibilities of senior leadership that we haven't even touched on yet. 
Next week, we'll hear about four more key ways to nurture a culture of innovation on campus. We have to have those partnerships in order to be able to, to innovate together. We put in place a, a million dollar fund. I'm of the view that everything starts with hiring. Universities have not had a lot of tolerance for people making mistakes. It's going to be a great episode. To be sure you don't miss it, take a moment now to join more than 13,000 10 with Ken subscribers and followers on any of a dozen platforms. You'll find links to all these channels in an email subscription form on our website, 10withken.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. 10 with Ken is a production of Eduvation Inc. Copyright 2017. I'm available for conference keynotes, campus PD events, board retreats, and committee workshops in person or now virtually too. For more information, please visit www.eduvation.guru or 10withken.com.